there's a group here that's involved in a study called the St. Elias Erosion and Tectonics Project. It has the acronym of STEEP. As the name implies, it, it's a study that emphasizes the interactions between tectonic processes, which are interior motions of the earth, and surface processes of erosion to form mountain systems. The St. Elias Mountain Range is in southern Alaska, right in the corner of Alaska, and it's characterized by extreme topographic relief, so, but, but elevations top out at 18 to 20,000 feet. Most people in North America probably can't even find this place on a map, and yet it's North America's greatest mountain range. The feature that makes this area particularly significant, and the reason we're actually here in the steep project, is that there's a unique interaction here between the erosion and tectonics. Tectonics acts to build the mountains and erosion acts to destroy them. And in this region, both of those processes occur at an extremely high rate relative to many other parts of the world. We're sitting in a unique climatic setting at high latitude in the North Pacific. And strong North Pacific storms pound this coastline every winter and drop very large quantities of snow 100 feet or more in many of the high mountain regions. And those accumulate over time to produce glacial ice, which represent, by most people's estimates, the most aggressive erosion agents on the planet. And so we're looking at that particular interaction in which we have the glacial systems and a very active tectonic system to build this particular mountain range. <laughs> As we check the car hills, we'll see what, whether there's a landing spot, whether there's anything you can sample there, and then maybe throw people on the boat for part of the trip back so we just have one back. The effect of that landscape that has been reshaped by glaciers has been that deformation patterns have shifted over time so that fault systems that were active a million years ago shut down, and we have new faults that have activated in different places. And so one of our goals here is to understand how those systems turn on and off and why they turned on and off when they did. My team is part of the structural geology group. Our job is to look at the long-term development of faults and folds of the rock masses. Yeah, if you look in the rock in here, guys, look, you can see there's sort of a scaly fabric. A lot of it is parallel with the fault zone. This is just one of innumerable faults that are in this region. We would just go systematically and work our way through this region, describing the faults and determining their geometry and looking at which stratigraphic units are sitting on either side of the fault because that allows us to get more information about how much they've moved and uh, that allows us ultimately to reconstruct kind of the motions that occurred in the construction of the mountains here. Well, a lot of the geology um, that they're looking at tells you about the motions that have happened in this area during the past, and the GPS tells you the motions that are happening right now at this instant. Um, so, first of all, it'll tell us uh, how the tectonic plates in this area are moving, and it will also, then with that data, I'll be able to constrain um, where possible faults are and how much motion there might be on those faults. So we see a tectonic process here in which motion on those faults has acted to produce the mountains. The other part of the story that's right here in front of us, we see a glacier that's actively carving out the landscape and dumping sediments down this fjord. That process has been acting on this mountain range for at least five million years. And that interaction of how those come together is sort of the central theme of this particular project. We're going to go up on the west side of Icy Bay to look at the Akataga Formation. Some people think it's the oldest 15 million years, but most people think it's about 5 million years, and it really marks the start of sedimentation from the glacier. So we're going to be looking at glacial-derived material in the rock record out in front of the mountain belt. We want to take a look at these rocks straight ahead, see what's on the back side, but then we'll curve along the point just to see some of the deglaciated areas where we might be able to work. Is. 
ready for the label. Well, this is an interesting exposure because this, these are rocks that are probably about three million years old. So you can see all these white spots, these are class. So these were pieces of rock that were carried by the glacier, were entrained into the ice and came out on icebergs and they dropped down into this brown unit, which was soft mud. And so even if we don't know everything about the mountains, we have this package of sediment that's out in front of them. And we know the oldest sediment that was eroded off is at the bottom, the youngest is at the top. And then we can start to date things in between and look at the fossils to know how old, when did it start? Was there more sediment at one time? Well, I'm studying the speed of the glacier for use as a measurement of what the erosion rate might be as part of the St. Elias Erosion Tectonics Project. What I've done is I've put different targets out on the glacier surface in a longitudinal profile and also a transect so that I can get what's happening, how the velocity changes as I go across the glacier. And I'm using this theodolite, which is a surveying tool, to measure the angle change over a period of six days. So basically, the more the angle changes over that period, the faster it's going. What we're interested in specifically is looking at if the glacier is carving down really fast, what does that mean in terms of the uplift of the mountain itself? Does it mean that the glacier will just carve down? Does it mean that they'll actually, because the glacier is carving down, it's actually thinning the crust and making it slightly lighter, so maybe it will uplift a little faster because it's lighter? We're interested in looking at those kind of interactions. My work is definitely one piece of a larger project. We have people looking at all the different facets that make this mountain region. And so it's definitely a very complicated puzzle, but all the pieces do fit in. There's some things we already know from the field work. It's pretty clear what some of the map pattern relationships are, the geometry of structures, which we've been working on here for the last few days. Uh, a lot of other things we'll have to take back to the lab for doing dating techniques and various other things. So there's a lot of work left to do, but this is the hard part. Fun part too.